Hey there everybody, I'm Alexis Ward and this is 12 Faces Psychology. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope you'll hit subscribe and the bell so that you can be notified when my videos come out. All right, so today we are gonna be getting into eight of the most common brainwashing techniques. So I've been doing sort of a series of uh, think for yourself themed videos and this goes along with that. So, you know, usually when we talk about brainwashing, we're talking about sort of this extreme context of um, like Jim Jones or Scientology, these cults that take things so far to an extreme and isolate a small group of people and utilize these techniques that often very serious, violent, dark things come out of them. So. That is an incredibly useful model because we can really see the mechanics of brainwashing when we look at an extreme case like that. But today I want to take it out of that kind of fringe context and I want to put it into everyday life. I want to have us look at how our world right now is functioning using these type of tactics. Why do I want to do this? Because I want you to think for yourself, because I want you to consider logically with clear intent and emotion, with clear thinking, with open mindedness, open heartedness, how you feel about the world and what's going on. <clears throat> and in order to do that, you kind of have to clear out some of the cobwebs. You got to clear out some of the junk that right now might be getting in the way of having a clear filter. So let's talk about some of these tactics and how they work. All right, the first of these that I'm gonna to touch on is perceived choice. You can be a Democrat, you can be a Republican, you could be a farmer, you could be a dentist, you could be a banker. You're free, right? I mean, you got all these choices. So that's just sort of like a very general idea of how perceived choice works, right? Is you give people the idea that they have free will by giving them a range of options. However, these options are limited by the agenda of whoever the manipulator in question is. We all seem to think that we have a free system because we have perceived choice. We're able to vote, we're able to uh, vocalize, although not as much so right now with all the suppression of free speech that's going on. But in general, we believe ourselves to be a free society for those reasons. However, when you look at the limited options that are available, it starts to look a lot less free and a lot more contrived. So perceived choice and the idea that you are a free agent within the system is an important part of the brainwashing process because it lulls people into complacency. It gives you the idea that you are not being controlled, gives you the idea that you are capable of asserting your free will, all the while narrowing your choices according to an already established agenda. All right, that brings us to number two, which is the repetition of reductionist slogans. So anytime that you are seeing a brainwashing in progress, you are going to see reductionist logic. And what that means is that you are taking something that is very complex, very nuanced, very expanded and um, complicated, and you are bringing it down to a black and white concretized reductionist notion of what's really going on. We're seeing a lot of that right now. We are seeing a lot of messaging being pushed in the mass media and all you have to do is go search for a montage of uh, media messaging and you will find all kinds of evidence of this, of how the repetition of these reductionist slogans is used to seed our consciousness and then you start hearing other people adopt this language, you start hearing the world around you take form according to these ideas that people are um, espousing as their own because they're hearing them over and over and over again. And it's giving your unconscious some degree of relief, right? Because we're in incredibly uncertain times. And so to have these very stable, black and white, this is how it is and that's the answer, kind of notions promoted 
is particularly seductive right now because we're looking for stable data. We're looking for stable things to rest our consciousness on and build from. So having these kinds of overly simplified messaging so repetitive is really seductive to the human mind right now, but it also takes things out of the messy, complicated, nuanced discussion that really needs to be occurring. And it gives people this concretized way of thinking where they're not really, they're not really taking into consideration all the gray area that occurs within all of these major social issues that are arising. All right, that brings us to number three, which is emotional manipulation. Fear mongering, inciting anger, inciting division, inciting tension between groups. So in, in cult scenarios, um, and, and this also applies to what's going on in the world right now, but in cult scenarios, they're specifically recruiting members who have a desire to belong, who maybe grew up without a family, who did not have a sense of belonging and have a deep desire to find that. So the reason that that is such an appealing quality in a cult member is because your willingness to comply is in exact relationship to how much you desire to belong. If you crave being a part of the group so much, you will be willing to sacrifice your own integrity, to sacrifice your own thoughts in order to feel a part of and accepted by a group. So right now, you know, we have a fair amount of that. It's actually kind of scary to speak out and even talk about critical thinking, even talk about brainwashing right now, because there is so much of an energy of, shh, don't talk about that. Just be in fear with everybody else. Just be willing to do all the stuff and accept what's being told to us. So be very cautious about what emotions are being manipulated out of you and what emotions are arising organically. I've done several other videos that have to do with um, kind of wading through your emotions and working with that type of energy. So if you're interested, go check those out. Uh, but let's move on now. Oh, before we move on from emotional manip manipulation, I have to talk about fear, right? Because that is the primary vehicle for emotional manipulation right now. Fear puts your nervous system off balance. It puts you in a state of hypervigilance. It puts you in a state of um, fight, flight, or freeze. And often you are much more willing to accept alternatives or measures of action because you're in a state of unbalance. So emotional manipulation is a really profound part of how the brainwashing process occurs. Look for it, look for it in your world. Ask yourself when you're having a strong reaction, when you're getting triggered, ask yourself, is this really a useful response for me right now? Or can I step back and witness it and ask myself how I arrived at this emotional experience and whether it's actually a healthy response or it's a triggered unhealthy reaction that has more to do about, that has more to do with provocation and your previous conditioning in life than it does with the truth of what might be going on. All right, so now let's go to number four, which is isolation. Sound familiar? Anyone been in isolation lately? Quarantine? Yup. So isolating people is one of the fundamental aspects of how cults work. You gotta get somebody out of society. You gotta get somebody in a situation where they are cut off from community, well, where they are cut off from other perspectives. They're cut off from a sense of support from others other than those that hold the same viewpoint. They are cut off from data points. So, um, you know, you've got people in this situation where they're lonely, they're cut off from their humanity, they're um, cut off from the things that make life enjoyable for them. And then you're limiting the scope of what information they're exposed to. So they're not gathering in groups and saying, how can we all handle this collectively as a community? How can we come together and really think about what 
ideals we want to promote? How can we make change effectively together? You've got everybody isolated in a context where they can't have those conversations and so they just have to choose to comply with and ingest what's being offered to them, again, perceived choice, as solutions for the problem. So moving on to number five, which is dependency. Dependency is a critical part of this puzzle as well. Because if somebody is independent, they don't need you at all, they have no use for you, they don't require anything from you, they can pretty much still think for themselves. There's no leverage with that person. That person is gonna make their own decisions. But if that person is wholly dependent upon you, dependent upon you for um, their right to vote, for their uh, ability to get a job, for their ability to travel, for their ability to go to school, for their ability to uh, create income for themselves, you got a lot of leverage over that person, right? Because you can squeeze that person in 10 different ways. And we're all pretty much in that situation where there is this sense of dependence on a system that we all know is failing and is currently falling apart, but we don't have an alternative to that system. So we are still currently dependent upon that system as much as we might be in opposition to a lot of the things that it stands for. So any way that you can in your life right now create a greater sense of self-sufficiency is gonna help you to be more free in your thinking and your experience of life. So I encourage you to look into that. All right, now we come to number seven, which is compliance, punishment, and reward. If you're gonna set up a system that has a lot of rules, then you've gotta have a way to enforce those rules. So there has to be a reward for compliance and a punishment for non-compliance. And we're seeing that in so many different shades and ways right now. So really take a look at all the ways that compliance is being enforced in our current global climate. All right, number eight is perceived virtue attribution. What does that mean exactly? In order to get somebody to really commit their willpower, their integrity, their heart, their soul to a cause, you have got to convince them that they're doing something good. Something like that has to be egocentric, as us therapists call it, which means that it has to match with the person's sense of integrity. It has to match with their sense of identity and what they are trying to form themselves as as a human being. So most people want to be thought of as good. Most people want to be thought of as virtuous human beings. And if you can convince someone that your cause, that whatever you're promoting as an agenda or um, as a uh, <clears throat> system of rules to be followed is actually for the good of humankind, is for the furthering of all consciousness, is for some kind of lofty humanitarian goal, you can get very good-hearted, often very competent, strong-willed people to do incredibly against the grain of their personality type things because they're believing that the end justifies the means. So be conscious of the ways in which your desire for human evolution could be being manipulated by the powers that be, could be, be getting manipulated by um, the messaging that is inherent right now. Just be conscious of that because I actually think this is the most important of all of these because when you think about brainwashing, a lot of people make the assumption that it means somebody is sort of weak-minded. But oftentimes, it's very strong-minded people that get sucked into cults and things like that, and it's because their heartstrings are being pulled at. If they are empathic and they're connected to the overall good of the world, and they can be convinced that what they're doing is pushing that agenda forward, people will do amazing things. For that amazingly um, terrible things a lot of times. So be conscious of the way that your goodwill might be getting used against you. All right, I hope this has been useful for all of you and I hope that you are clearing your filter out and making your way towards the most empowering thought possible. And I hope that you'll come back and see my further videos. All right, thanks and bye-bye.